It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. How are we all doing? Humans of the world, it's your boy Major McDonald's or Unobjectivable and you're watching the series on my channel talking about the best weapons in Enlisted. In this episode we'll be talking about assaulter weapons, i.e. SMGs and shotguns, the weapons that only assaulters, tankers and pilots can equip from campaigns. I must begin by saying that these are all only my opinions and it took a very very long time to research and rank all of these so I'm eager to see whether you guys agree with me in the comments below. Some of my opinions may be unpopular, but I'll be giving as much evidence behind my reasoning as possible. I will not be referring to gold order weapons, nor will I talk about premium squad weapons, but I might do a video on these if it is heavily requested down below. This video will consider the assault weapon's power, its stats, how fun it is to use in game, how it feels, and how early it is unlocked in campaigns. And the stats I will consider the most important are fire rate, damage, vertical recoil, and shot deviation. I'll talk about them in reverse order too, beginning with number 20 and ending with number 1, also known as the best assault weapon in my opinion. I should also state that all SMGs and shotguns can be very good regardless if you are good with accuracy, aiming and if you rank them up to maximum level. Note that specific weapon centric soldier perks, for example such as plus 12% firearm reload speed, vertical and horizontal recoil reduction and plus 20% weapon aim speed can all improve the benefits of the weapons or counteract its downsides. So plan your troop perks to go with the weapons you plan on using. Also note that I will be considering shotguns post buff meaning I'll be analysing them including all of the updates they have just received as of February 2022. However, sadly, still none of them made it in my top 20 assault weapons. Sorry, forgive me the word, it's bullshit. The Winchester Model 1912, the best shotgun out of the lot, only just misses out. Many other weapons did not make my 20 strong shortlist for various reasons, but the big reasons that popped up often were too low fire rate and too high fire rate in combination with a very small magazine size. Some weapons that did not make the cut but could still be very useful in a variety of certain situations include the Beretta M38, the OVP M1918, the Beretta M1918, the PPD 34 stroke 38, box magazine, the M3 submachine gun or the grease gun, the MP38 and the VG1-5. I also found it was much 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 harder to rank this category of weapons than it was to rank rifles and in many cases there aren't clear winners as you might say and it's more of an opportunity cost decision as in do you want more of this and less of that or less of this and more of that. Anyway now that the contextual information is out of the way you know the drill by now. Let's begin. Number 20 Sten Mark II Normandy and Tunisia Allies this British submachine gun was very common amongst British and Commonwealth forces throughout World War II and in the Korean War. It had a simple design and very low production costs by 1940 standards, explaining why it was the second most produced submachine gun of the entire Second World War, after the famous Soviet PPSH-41. It was so common that it puts the common in Commonwealth. Okay, okay, okay. It wasn't my best. Relax, relax, dude. It has base damage of 5.5 and fires between 500 to 550 shots per minute with a 32 round magazine, 2 point second reload time and balanced recoil of 18 for both horizontal and vertical. There's nothing particularly wrong with this submachine gun in game, but also nothing particularly spectacular either, explaining why it scrapes onto my top 20 list. It does have semi-automatic firing mode in case you for some reason prefer that, but if I was to pick the most negative thing about the weapon, it would probably be its shot deviation, which suggests it would not be ideal using it in a semi-automatic fashion. Number 19 FNAB 43 Normandy Axis this Italian submachine gun tends to get a bad rep amongst the enlisted community, but it seems fairly unjustified. For a weapon unlocked early in the campaign, it's not bad at all. It has slightly more base damage and reload speed than the Sten, at 5.7 damage and 2.5 seconds respectively, and it has less recoil than the number 20 in this list. It is let down by its rate of fire and shot deviation, but it's fairly cheap to fully upgrade, at which point you'll improve these two issues anyway. Plus, the firing sound is quite... unique. Number 
number 18. PPS 42. Berlin. Allies. Not many people actually know what PPS 43 stands for, but in fact it actually stands for Please Please Subscribe. Nah, I'm kidding. Imagine if Mr. Stalin actually named a submachine gun after his lack of subscribers. Like, come on, dude. Russian submachine guns in general you will soon notice are a prominent feature in this leaderboard, and the PPS 42 does them no disservice, as it's still a very good weapon and unlocked at the start of the Berlin campaign for the Allies. It is significantly faster to fire than the FNAB, but still some way short of the rate of fire of other Soviet submachine guns which we'll come to later. A 35 round magazine is a nice addition to this, with very similar base damage, recoil and reload speeds. It also feels very smooth to use and its firing sound is quite satisfying. All of this whilst being the very first free unlock in the Berlin Allies campaign. Fully upgraded, this thing is pretty damn good in its own right, but it's just a shame it's overshadowed by its Soviet SMG cousins. Number 17. M3A1 Submachine Gun. Normandy. Allies. The M3A1 modification of the famous grease gun is definitely going to surprise some of you watching this video considering its reputation of not being fantastic, but it deserves 17th in my book. With one of the best base hit powers out of all the SMGs on this list at 6.8, you will 100% at least down enemies in two hits. It's almost as hard hitting as some semi-automatic rifles out there, which is insane. It also has competitive reload speeds, recoil and magazine sizes compared to others on this list as well as very decent sights, but of course the rate of fire, and perhaps shot deviation, is where it starts to struggle the most. For this reason, many people want to change it out for something else the first chance they get, but my advice is to upgrade this thing to max level first to increase its rate of fire and other stats, especially if you're a new player and have just unlocked this weapon. You'll be surprised by how powerful and how much damage it does, I promise. Number 16. MP35-1. Normandy, Moscow and Berlin. Axis. Another surprising choice, but this time because of how low in the pecking order it is compared to how late you unlock it in the majority of the campaigns it's available in. It's a good weapon, don't get me wrong, but there isn't anything special about it, and it honestly doesn't seem like much of, if at all, an upgrade on previous German submachine guns. 6.0 base damage is a nice addition, but worse than the M3A1 grease gun that we reviewed in the previous number. It does not have the best reload speed or vertical recoil, and a 32 round magazine is decent, but nothing to write home about. Its rate of fire is much better than the M3A1 grease gun, which is the biggest reason why it pips it to 16th place here, and it's a good weapon to use, but considering how late of an unlock it is in all three campaigns it's available in, it's a bit of a letdown. Number 15. MP40. Normandy, Moscow, Berlin and Tunisia. Axis. This staple of the Wehrmacht in World War II is rightfully present in all campaigns and is an early unlock in each of them. Considering its stats and its in-game feel, it's surprisingly powerful and can form the basis of any assaulter squad. A decent 5.7 base hit power and a decent rate of fire as well between 450 and 500 shots per minute is actually slightly worse than the MP35-1 in the previous number, but it has substantially better reload speed. 2. 3 seconds and better recoil. With the same magazine size as well, you might wonder why it pips the MP35-1, but the fact that it is an early unlock and has really nice sights are why I rank it 15th and ahead of the MP35-1. Fully upgraded, this MP40 can really dish that damage. Number 14. ZK383. Normandy. Axis.
A weapon that appears to be rarely spoken about, the Czechoslovakian ZK383 should really be spoken about more. 5.7 base hit power and over 600 shots per minute, a competitive 2.8 second reload time, decent recoil and magazine size all mean it's hard to find a major issue with this weapon. It scores higher than the MP35-1 and the MP40, mostly due to its higher rate of fire, plus it feels quite cool to use. Not much else to say about it really, it's just a very decent assault weapon. Number 13. Beretta M1. Tunisia. Axis. The major selling point of the Beretta M1 is its 40 round magazine, something that beats all other SMGs we have previously just been through. Apart from this, it also has one of the lowest vertical recoils at 20, which is another great addition, and the above average 5.7 base hit power, 2.8 second reload time, and 450 plus rate of fire means in all other ways it's comparable to previous weapons, and then adding the 40 round magazine on top, so it has to be in 13th on this list. Number 12. PPSH-41 Box Magazine. Berlin. Allies. And now we enter the territory of the monstrous fire rates from Soviet SMGs. The PPSH-41 box magazine is lethal, at least 910 shots per minute, still with a 5.5 base damage, 2.7 second reload time, and only 16 vertical recoil. The 35 round magazine is where it begins to show its weakness, as even though it's not that bad, the rate of fire means you need to reload a hell of a lot if you're going to be making use of that fire rate. Its damage drop-off is pretty insane too, so for long distance shooting you will need to fire a lot of bullets to kill someone, which is even more painful with such a low magazine size for its fire rate. The PPD 34-38 box magazine might also have been on this list in a similar position as the PPSH-41 box magazine, but its even smaller magazine size of 25 means you will arguably spend more time reloading it than shooting it, still despite its great fire rate, so it doesn't make it into my top 20. This PPSH-41 41 box magazine weapon would be one of the best in the game if not for its magazine size. Instead, it's only 12. Number 11. Beretta M38-42. Tunisia. Axis. The Beretta M38 alone does not make the top 20, mostly due to its small magazine size, but the Beretta M38-42 does in 11th. The reasons for this include that it has a very decent 5.7 base damage, a great 40 round magazine again like the previous Beretta we've discussed, good vertical recoil at only 21, decent reload speed at 2.6 seconds and not an awful rate of fire. It is definitely better than the M1 Beretta in many many ways, but beats the BPSH-41 box magazine due to a decent magazine size for its shots per minute. Upgraded fully, this thing in Tunisia is lethal. Number 10. Lanchester. Normandy and Tunisia. Allies. This SMG was actually a copy of the German MP28-2, but it is surprisingly good compared to it in-game. The Lanchester has a good 5.7 base damage, a 2.6 second reload time, a 32 round magazine, and a better rate of fire than the Beretta M38-42 in 11th place. Fully upgraded makes it pretty dang good. If you compare this thing against the Sten MK2 in 20th position, the first gun that we reviewed here, the Lanchester is actually only mildly better in in only a few areas, like damage and fire rate, and the fact that it's only mildly different shows that all assault weapons in the game can be very good if upgraded and used correctly, and really anything between position 20th and 10th can be rearranged and there would be arguments you could make for doing so. I'm just mentioning this to express how difficult it is to really rank these SMGs when, a lot of the time, they are more similar than they are different. Number 9. Beretta M38 40 round magazine. Normandy and Berlin. Axis. 
Another version of the famous Italian SMG comes in at 9th, a very, very similar modification of the Beretta M38 that did not make it into my top 20, but instead has 40 rounds per magazine instead of a tragic 20 rounds that the Beretta M38 had, doubling the magazine size. This change alone propels it into my top 20, but into 9th place. It has the same damage and magazine size as the Beretta M38-42, but it has a significantly higher firing rate and slightly less vertical reach recoil than the M38-42 version, therefore it places higher than it. With its high magazine size combined with lower recoil, it also bests the Lanchester too. It has ever so slightly higher reload speed than the Lanchester and the Beretta M38-42 as well, but with easy upgrading this is neutralised quickly, and the 0.3 second difference is too small to really notice anything. Its sight, for some reason, I'm a big fan of, and its shot deviation is pretty low too. Number 8. PPS 43. Berlin. Allies. Another really under the radar Soviet SMG that is overshadowed by other Soviet SMGs. This PPS 43 is actually an amazing SMG, even without any upgrades, compounded by the fact it's unlocked exceptionally early in the Berlin Axis campaign. A great 35 round magazine, one of the lowest reload times we've seen so far at 2.4 seconds, a very good fire rate at 640 to 700 shots per minute, which fits its magazine size. It still has 5.5 damage and it has a very decent decent vertical recoil at only 23. It even has high accuracy and low shot deviation due to its muzzle brake, an addition on top of the PPS-42 for this Model 43 version. There's so little not to like about this thing, and if someone tells you it's bad, then the only explanation for it is that either they hate the sights, or they're just bad. This weapon really doesn't get the recognition it deserves. Number 7. M1 Thompson. Normandy and Tunisia. Allies. Finally, we arrive at the first legendary staple of the Americans in World War II, the first version on this list of the Thompson. This version is actually the later unlock in the Normandy campaign, which might suggest it's the best version of the Thompson, and for some people, it is. For others, not so much. This is because its rate of fire, 700 to 800 shots per minute by default, puts off some as it can be seen as excessive in relation to its magazine size of 30. And if you upgrade it, which you would want to do for other upgrades that the gun would have as well, the fire rate gets even quicker, exacerbating the problem. Which means that for some, you don't want to upgrade the thing, which is insanity. For me though, I love the M1 version, and I can tolerate its high rate of fire, but I will admit I have not upgraded them fully, because the rate of fire would just be too big for its magazine size of 30. Other than this though, the Thompson has fantastic base damage at 6.8, like the M3 grease gun that we reviewed earlier in this review, as well as a decent reload speed and vertical recoil. Plus, it has decent sights, and it does feel damn cool to use, <laughs> I won't lie. Number 6. M1A1 Thompson. Normandy and Tunisia. Allies. This version of the Thompson might be unlocked earlier than the M1 variant, but its key difference is its lower fire rate. It's enough to keep better control of the weapon and manage its recoil better. Plus, when upgraded, its rate of fire essentially becomes the same as of a standard default M1 Thompson. So if you preferred that rate of fire on the M1 Thompson, then this M1A1 Thompson is still the weapon to choose. Other than that, it's the exact same weapon, other than an extra point of vertical recoil, which is just pointless and I don't understand the point in it and it's just not noticeable at all. The shot deviation and recoil might feel not fantastic on Thompsons, but you can minimise this with the corresponding troop perks and by upgrading the type of Thompson in question. Number 5. Thompson M21-28 Box Magazine. Tunisia. Allies. 
What's not to love about this SMG? For starters, it looks awesome with its curvy handles, but looking at its stats, it gets even better. Still, it has the same lethal base damage as the other Thompsons, but higher rate of fire, yet not too excessive than the M1A1 Thompson, a much better reload speed, 30% better than the other two Thompsons we have just covered, and lower vertical and horizontal recoil. When upgraded, the rate of fire becomes the same as the M1 Thompson, which is just high enough for its magazine size. I'm a big, big, big fan of its open sights, and its shot deviation feels better than the other Thompsons too. Overall, just a fantastic weapon to use in really all senses of the word. Number 4. PPD 34-38. Moscow. Allies. And now, we enter the era of Soviet SMG dominance. The PPD-34-38 is quite an early unlock for the Soviets in the Moscow campaign, yet it still beats the last unlocks for all of the American SMGs. Why? Well, one very, very big reason is its 71 round magazine size, which is amazing. You can put off reloading for so long, as it's over double the size of all the 30 round magazines, and therefore you will have fewer of those annoying deaths when you're reloading loading. It also has a fantastic rate of fire, which some might see as too high, but the fact its magazine size is so high means it's completely fine. It also has very low vertical recoil per bullet, albeit you fire bullets very fast so it feels like it's higher than it is, but you get what I mean, and still has 5.5 base damage. Its big downside is its significantly higher reload time at 4 seconds, but considering this reload time is only 33% higher than the Thompson's reload time, despite having a 2.5 times magazine size than the Thompsons, it's more than made up for. The sound of all this, and the next few weapons when firing, is so satisfying too. Oh, it feels so good when you mow down entire squads with that sound. When fully upgraded, this thing hits like an absolute truck. Number 3. PPD-40. Moscow and Berlin. Allies. Entering the final stretch now, we can see the finish line. Hang in there. Here, we have basically just an improvement on the PPD-34-38, which we just spoke about. It has improved sights for my liking, and an even higher fire rate of 820 to 900 shots per minute, still with the 71 round magazine size. And it has a 0.2 second lower reload time than the PPD-34-38. Its damage, vertical recoil, and weight are all the same, but for some reason the PPD-40 also has one, yes one, less horizontal recoil. Who knows dude, just dark flow things. Number 2. PPSH-41. Moscow and Berlin. Allies. Finally, we come across the amazing PPSH-41, in a very, very high position in my rankings. Once again, it's basically just an even further improvement on the previous two we just spoke about. With the same fantastic sights as the PPD-40, and an even more awesome firing sound. Now, it has a whopping 910 to 1000 shots per minute, which is unreal, and that's not even upgraded. And it might as well just be a laser beam for all we care at this point. Still, with 5.5 base damage and and the 71 round magazine on top. It has the same reload speed as the PPD-40, but faster than the PPD-34-38, and also has less recoil, both vertically and horizontally, than both PPDs. Imagine ranking this thing up, it's just pure cheating man. You'll shred through people like they were shreddies in milk, dude. Honestly though, this weapon should be illegal. Number 1. MP43-1. Normandy. Axis. Now this is an assault weapon to behold. 
Not that the PPSH wasn't, but like... And in real life, this weapon is the precursor and very, very, very similar to the modern STG-44 assault rifle. We haven't spoken about an Axis SMG since the Beretta M38 40 round magazine, which was in ninth place. So this weapon really is the definition of a power spike for the Germans, with an absolutely insane 8 base damage, which rivals even the power of any semi-automatic rifle. You will rip through enemies with ease. A decent 2.6 second reload speed, another decent 30 round magazine, and a not bad vertical recoil at all, all ensure that this weapon keeps its top spot. But arguably, the best thing about it is that it feels goddamn awesome to use. It feels so out of place being in this game, but it 100% should be in this game, which makes it even better. Fully upgraded, its power becomes over 10, which is absolutely 100% utterly, wholly, unreservedly, perfectly, unconditionally cheating. And then all its other stats get better too when you upgrade it, so you know, it just becomes whatever is even worse than cheating. What's worse than cheating? It becomes murder. Yes, it becomes the malignant, objectual equivalent of absolute genocide. So, what's your favourite assault weapon? One on this list, or do you prefer something else? I have to say, I'm personally a big fan of the Thompson variants and pretty much all Soviet SMGs. Let me know in the comments whether you agree with my opinions and what your favourites are. I'll be reading them all. That though is going to wrap up this video and I hope it has helped you all, you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you did, then slap a like on this video and of course subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. If you guys want more in-depth reviews of specific weapons then let me know down below as well as which category of weapons you want ranked next. Or whether you're interested in my ranking or reviewing premium squad weapons or gold order weapons. Nevertheless, it's been a pleasure ranting at you today. Have a wonderful day, enjoy yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one. Just let me fall to my